first of all, what is um, the chemistry IA? So um, the chemistry IA is essentially a big lab report. Uh, so you need to conduct some kind of experiment and you then need to report the findings, report your findings. So it can be a practical experiment or it could be a database IA. And that's something that uh, quite a few students have to be doing at the moment because they don't necessarily have access to labs with the whole pandemic situation. Uh, so some, some students are having to do database IA, so, but you, you're still conducting an important piece of research and you then have to uh, report your research in the proper scientific way of reporting things. Okay, so um, if you guys are in IB1, so in your first year of IB, here are just some first steps that you may want to go through um, in order to, to, start, to start your IA. So the first thing, and that's actually the thing that I struggled the most with, was finding a topic okay so obviously you need to find a topic for your ia and um my suggestion my advice on that point is to find a topic that generally interests you uh, as a tutor i've noticed that students that do that that, that work on the, on the topic that generally interests them usually do a lot better than those that just choose a random topic of a past example um and so just a little little story of how I found my my IA topic. I was really struggling to find a topic. I sent so many requests to my teachers, but then it was either too hard or too easy, or we couldn't do it in the school lab, or whatever. Then one day I was sitting down and I saw the river that was flowing in front of my house. And I was like, I should just do something on, on river and pollution and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I ended up doing my IA about water pollution and stuff. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on. And I'm now, in fact, working in sustainability. So it was, it was generally something I was interested in. So once you find your topic, you need to conduct some kind of profound research about around the topic, you know. So um, you, it can start with some basic Google search, but then you need to go into um, more scientific literature. So you need to consult scientific literature around the topic that you have chosen. And a good way of doing that is by using Google Scholars, which is really good. So google.scholars.com, you can find good scientific papers on Google Scholars. If your school has access to JSTOR, ask your librarian or your teacher. Uh, JSTOR is also, um, it's also a good platform um, to find scientific papers. Um, you, there's also a really good underrated uh, website called freefullpdf.com, but you can find really good scientific papers that are free and they're really good. So that's that. So you need to start doing research on your topic and then refine your idea to something very, very specific, which we will come to later on when we'll speak about the research question. You then have to find a method for um, so how, how are you going to conduct your experiment and you do so by again looking at liter lit scientific literature, going through textbooks, um, YouTube is actually quite handy sometimes in uh, understanding how, how to conduct an experiment and one important thing when you're at this stage where you're finding ideas and stuff is to always communicate with the teacher and tell them oh I got this, is it feasible because your teacher will be able to guide you and tell you that, okay, you know, we don't have the right equipment, we don't have this chemical, we can't do that, or yeah, this is good, or this is too easy, or it's too complex. So always like try to communicate with your teacher. Right, so here is a very good format that I suggest you use for, um, for your IA. The reason why this format, which is the format I used and the format that I recommend my students use, why this, this format is really good, it, it's because it's laid out criteria-wise. So for, it, it makes it easier for the person marking your work to sort of give you the points. Because if you have a, a, first, a first paragraph of personal engagement and you explain your personal engagement, that, that person who's marked the examiner will, will automatically tick off the personal engagement criteria. So it's just a good way of making it easier 
for whoever's marking your, your work, just make their life easier and they will give you the points. This is what we want. Okay, so um, what we're gonna do now is go through all of the criteria and um, try to figure out how to score the highest marks on each criteria. Right, so first criteria, criteria A, is personal engagement. So the best way to score highly in this criteria is to find a topic that generally interests you and to explain that this topic interests me because this and that. For example, when I was doing my IA, I said there was a river that was flowing in front of my door. I'm like concerned about water pollution. It's something that interests me. I'd like to have a career in that. That is a good personal engagement. You should also try to relate your IA to, um, to the syllabus, okay? So for uh, taking an example from my own IA again, so I, I conducted a, a titration, which is called the Winkler's method, which is a way to determine the amount of oxygen in water. And this is something that you actually study in, uh, in IB chemistry, I think it's in chapter nine. So I related, I related my method to what we were doing in class and this brings you marks. And try to show your interest throughout your IA. For example, in my method, I showed a relation to the syllabus, and this gets you marks for personal engagement. Okay? Right, so next criteria, criteria B, is exploration. The first thing, um, the, the first important thing in that criteria is to have solid background information. So the background information sets the context of your IA. So you want something that really sort of concisely, but at the same time precisely, explains the context, uh, summarizes existing literature about, about the IA, uh, sorry, about your topic. And you want something that really underlines the relevance of your topic. For example, I have a student, she was working on vitamin C and temperature dependence of vitamin C concentration. And in her background information, she mentions that this is important because the vitamin C is, is a crucial vitamin to humans, blah, 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 etc. So this will get you marks for this criteria. Um, so your methodology is very important as well. Your, your methodology has to be very detailed. And um, so to give you an idea, a person who reads your methodology should be able to replicate your experiments. So it has to be very detailed. Avoid using I. So don't say I poured 20 centimeter cube of calcium manganate in the beaker or whatever. You, you should phrase it as in 20 centimeter cube of calcium manganate was poured into whatever. So this is how you, you phrase your methodology. And one important thing that is often overlooked, do mention safety aspects that you respect, hopefully, uh, during um, your experiment and any sort of like ethical measures that you have considered as well. So do mention that in your IA, it, give, it brings you marks for exploration, criteria B. Okay, an important thing with criteria B is, um, is, to, is the research question. And it's important to form formulate a, a good research question. And to formulate a good research question, it has to be very, very precise. Your research question should include your independent variable, which is what you're changing, your dependent variable, which is what you're measuring, and as many controlled variables as possible. Okay. So for example, mine was how does the concentration of the salt oxygen vary along the river Eau Bleu in Mauritius as the hydrostatic pressure decreases during the course of the same day. So my independent variable, so what I was changing was the hydrostatic pressure. Well, I wasn't changing it, but this is the thing that was changing. And the dependent variable was the dissolved oxygen, which was what I was measuring. And the two main control variables were um, the river. So it was just one river. And I've mentioned the name of the river and the fact that it, all the measurements were taken during the course of the same day. So here you go. Okay, so criteria C, which is analysis. So the first thing that you need to remember 
is that if you're, if you're doing an experiment, make sure that you have 25 data points. And the way you do that is that you, you would have um, sort of five different um, independent variables. So for example, if I'm determining the amount of vitamin C as temperature changes, I would have five different temperatures where, and for each temperature, I, I would take five trials and five times five is 25. So that's usually how you get to 25 data points. If you're doing a database IA, which is something I want to talk about at the end, um, you need a hundred data points. So it's slightly different because you're not actually conducting an experiment. Okay, so ensure that you're using the correct type of graph. So depending on the data that you're collecting, you should be using, I don't know, bar chart, line graph, depends on the type of data. Ask your teacher, do some research, make sure this is right though. Um, make sure that you calculate the errors associated to your experiment, which is something that you learn in chapter 11. In terms of discussion, so once you've collected all, your, all of your data, um, of, you need to describe the, the, the trends and everything, you need to describe the data that, that you obtain, but you also, and most importantly, you need to discuss and explain your results. So why am I obtaining this trend? Why is there an upward trend? And relate that to things you learn in class or um, existing, like, lit, existing research on the topic, textbooks and all that stuff. Which brings me to my next point, make references to existing research on the topic in the discussion bit of your IA. And also try to find literature values, if possible, and compare the values that you obtain um, in, your, in your experiment to literature values. This actually brings us to our next point, which is uh, evaluation. So in the evaluation, you need to discuss the level of uncertainty of your study. So you should have calculated the uncertainty, like I, meant, I just mentioned in the previous slide. Um, <clears throat> you need to discuss the strengths and the limitations of your study and how you can remediate to your limitations. So how would a future, a, a further, another study in the same topic that you are working on, how would, how would they remediate to, that, to those limitations? For example, when I was calculating the hydrostatic pressure of rivers, um, I was throwing a ping pong ball in the river and someone else was catching the ping pong ball at a specific length and we were timing it. It was not a great way of doing it. It was the only thing I had available to do it, but in, in a, a better way of doing that would have been to use a speedometer. So that's, um, that's a way to remediate to that limitation. Try to include at least five strengths and five limitations of your study. And an important bit are extensions to your study. Um, for example, in my case, I suggested that, um, so I calculated the amount of dissolved oxygen correlated it with hydrostatic pressure, but further studies could have calculated things like the biological oxygen demand of the, of, of the water, etc. And again, the extensions have to be realistic things. The conclusion is an, is an important part of your work. Um, it should answer your, your research question. And that's very important. Your conclusion should answer your research question. The way I structure my conclusions, ever since I was doing IB, up, up, up until now when I write lab reports at university or whatever, is um, I break it into four different paragraphs, okay? So my first paragraph is a summary of the objectives of the study. The second paragraph is a summary of the main results where I quote some important values. The fourth paragraph is a summary of the evaluation where I speak about the main strength and limitations of the study. And the last paragraph is any suggestions for further studies. So here we go. Um, so that's it. Do you guys have any questions? I know I've been asked three questions, one of which I hope to have answered already. Um, happy to answer anything that you guys send me. You can send me stuff through chat as well, I think.
I'm just going to stop sharing. Anyone has any questions, you can send me questions privately as well if you want, or you can turn on your camera and your, um, your microphone and ask me a question as well. Nope. Okay. So um, if no one has any questions, so I got a question about database IAs. Uh, which is something that quite a few people are having to to do at the moment um, because obviously uh, Corona. So I found some information. I've been working with some students that have to do database IAs. Um, so for a database IA, you should have at least 100 pieces of raw data and um, you should also assess the reliability of this data by you know evaluate like understanding where it's coming from is it coming from an accredited database for example if you're using the royal society of chemistry's database these are usually good stuff um so you should in your in your in your study talk about the reliability of your data um you should aim to collect data from different databases so for example, if I need to find the ionization energy of, I don't know, potassium, I will try to find an ionization energy in three different databases and then do an average of the three in order to, to, um, to obtain an average and not just one thing from one database. Um, one other thing that you should know is that it's good to talk about the um, an awareness of safety and ethics. So if you're using a specific database, if you could speak about the, the, the safety or ethic thing that is meant, it's usually mentioned how the data was obtained, it's always good. And yes, so that's that. Um, so question um so if uh, it's Catherine talking just Hello. about the databases um yep. where exactly would one find all the yeah that's a good question and i've had loads of students ask me oh where can i find a database so it's very hard to find a database especially as a, a student um so for chemistry there is the csr which is the chemistry i can't remember what it stands for the CSR is, is a, good, a good good place to find databases. Uh, you also have the Royal Society of Chemistry, which is quite good as well. Uh, you've got ChemSpider, which is also quite good. And you've got, um, so these are the reliable kind of databases that I usually use. 